Desperate times come for desperate, desperate measures, guys. So I slowly got locked out. Y'all seeing behind the scenes. <laughs> windows to keep it secured um what i like about these the, these structures that, that we do man is like we're not doing shit to these no, like no, repair wise i mean now if you're wholesaling you just 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 flipping a piece of paper but we right. buy and hold these properties exactly um acquire them a, a landlord will go in and fix this up to get it to the tip top shape for tenant ready right exactly and what are we doing to these properties we are doing absolutely nothing. We are setting literally the price. So we're not even we're not even moving this piece right here. Nope. We're gonna leave this here. So this one um, definitely needs some love, but it's a three bed, one bath. Um, okay. It's been available for a little while now, but um, you know we've seen some of the conditions on some of these things, and uh, yeah. this isn't anywhere near as bad as what we've sold. So this one will definitely go. It's just a matter of price, and that's how the slow flips work. They want it, they can have it. Right, so they're going to have to remove it if they want to remove they it. They got to remove it. Okay, so what would a landlord do? A landlord would be fixing this entire floor up, painting the whole house. You're already involved with what, 10 grand before you even get somebody inside? Um, that's being conservative. Um, probably, probably more than that. I'm trying to be nice yeah. on it, but yeah, 10 Gs. Yeah, yeah. Paint, definitely, you know, maybe, they probably put carpet, most mm -hmm. likely, because it's yeah. always carpet, that, you know, when you put mm -hmm. tennis in here, carpet is probably the best bet. We're gonna put an occupant in is show them the kitchen real quick. Sure. Oh, Watch out for the spider webs too. So spider webs come with the property too. Yeah, you can have those. Okay, spider webs come with the property. I mean. Um, so they get the kitchen just like this. Just like this, so the, the broken glass, everything on the floor. Why would an occupant want to move in this or acquire this property on a buy and hold strategy that we do? Well, um, you know, the people that are buying these homes, it's a unique, uh, unique client base so yeah. you know we get a lot of handymen that would rather go in and fix the house up themselves and they'll be able to save a lot of money a lot more money than buying a showroom ready home you know okay. we're selling this thing with three thousand dollars down mm -hmm. you know if we did any work we would just raise the price five ten thousand down and the buyer's like nah we'll take care of this right now and yeah. then yeah. we get back a much better product at the end yeah. of the day so this was a package deal so let's talk about this specific property what was the, just the, the number on this one uh, we just Took this one by itself. What was the number on this? One? Uh, I'd probably buy this for around twenty grand. This was a twenty thousand dollar property. Um, what's this? We call this a slow flip strategy. By the way, this is a buy and hold strategy. We're not wholesaling this. We're not assigning this one. It's not a fix and flip for us. This is a buy and hold strategy. So instead of renting it out, I'm trying to recap you. Instead of renting this property out, we're going to what we call slow flip it. All right. So talk about the numbers. Twenty thousand dollars for this house. Talk about the numbers of what we will slow flip before for our occupant. Well, um, assuming that we're not using any financing, no mortgage, we gotta make sure we cover our taxes, but yep. we would bid uh, a tenant buyer. I mean, they're not really tenants. They're tenant not buyer. really, yep. you know, they're, they got a mortgage for this house. Mm -hmm. So it's a tenant buyer and they will be putting $3,000 down. Yep. So that will cover any extra expenses. And we would sell this thing as is for $89,000 so overall. are they coming are they giving us eighty nine thousand dollars cash? No, they are. We're giving them a mortgage. This is called owner financing. Boom. All right. So eighty. So we twenty thousand dollars for the property, eighty nine thousand. Mm -hmm. Three thousand dollars down, big upfront. So exactly. what's, about, what's the beauty? I don't know the beauty of that three thousand dollars. Can they get that three thousand dollars back? Or well, no, that's our money. They put that money down. It comes off their mortgage. It's, it's all principal what they put that money down. But when we have people that don't pay or anything like that. That money is us covering. If we have to have a mortgage, we can cover any extra expenses for that time. And then if we have to do an eviction, roughly two months, and then uh, get somebody else in, get another $3,000 and a new 30-year mortgage. So $3,000 now refundable, like Alice said. So we buy this for $20,000, whether it's our cash. Let's say we wouldn't pay this cash for this property. $20,000 cash. We own it free and clear. Most people out there can't go to a bank to get a loan, so we own our finances out. Exactly. Right? Uh, something called slow flip, but we land contracted, meaning the name, the, the mortgage is still in our name, even though we're owner financing out to them, and they won't get the mortgage in their name until it's fully paid off for them. So eighty nine nine, three thousand dollars down, meaning that their their balance is eighty six nine, right? 
86.9. 86.9. And roughly, what would be the payment on that a month? Uh, well, we're 875 a month is what we're gonna get. So we're in it for twenty thousand dollars. I want to get these numbers. Twenty thousand dollars down. I mean, twenty thousand cash for this property. They gave us three thousand. So Correct. We're really in it for how much? Seventeen. Seventeen. Make me do math, and right? And getting how much a month? We're getting eight seventy-five. Do those numbers. I want this to. I hope this get a light bulb for you guys. Opposed to what would a landlord do? Pay twenty thousand for the property. Put. Put. Ten, fifteen grand into it maybe to make 20. it. Twenty. Make it right. Maybe twenty. I mean, easily twenty. Just looking at yeah. it. Yeah. We're just down. You want to take them upstairs? Right Absolutely. Now? Let's do it. It needs love to say the least. So, well, the um, ultimately it comes down to supply and demand and yeah. you know, these people don't really have options to buy other homes outside of going to move in or fix everything up. When you're renting, you have a lot more options right. and there's also no credit check. So we appeal to those people as well, as well as the fact that we can close immediately. Wait for it's just a couple of people off that are not banks right. that uh, Make a deal, make a dream come true for some people. Absolutely. Yeah. What, what I, I want to add to that too. So when you when you switch the message that okay, this property is for rent, mm -hmm. meaning or it's the lease, versus this property is owner financing. The person in their brain is switched from all the one. I I can go from renting a property to potentially owning a property without using a bank. Because a lot of people are aren't able to go to banks because of their credit or a financial situation or what happened in the crash. A lot of people still have exactly. you know, fucked up credit from you know the crash times or just even some maybe like late payments or whatever the case. So we give them the opportunity to, to, to have home ownership by financing the property and we're the bank. Exactly. And we still get the same monthly cash flow just like a landlord without being a landlord and having the stress of the leaky toilet calls mm -hmm. or all that you know all exactly that, that, that yeah so we're not getting calls in the morning saying that a pipe burst or anything like that who's, who's, who's paying for the pipes it's the tenant buyer the tenant it's their buyer. home yeah think about it like this if you go through a bank and you're buying a house for yourself you don't call the bank when saying something's messed up Look you got to right. call a plumber a landlord they would have to patch it up paint it that's the whole paint this whole room yeah. they, would, they would paint this whole room from what we've seen so far how much money do you think of their average landlord is gonna have to put into this thing i, I would say 20. 20. 15, 15, 20K. Yeah. And also an added okay. added benefit as well for the uh, the tenant buyer, they get a tax benefit for being a homeowner at the end of the day. Absolutely, absolutely. So really the only thing we're really paying, if you if we pay $20,000 for this, well, no, if you did, $20,000 cash, only paying taxes. Exactly. But let's, let's swap it a little bit. Somebody who doesn't want to pay cash for the deal, let's talk about our financing options. Well, that's true. How, 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 do we, how do we finance these on our end? Okay, well, what we actually did for this home is um, we didn't pay a dime out of pocket. We actually got some private money from a, uh, another investor friend of ours that we put, it up, put up the money. He makes 12% on that money. Mm -hmm. So our payment is 667.33 to him every but, but, month. But why is it, how much did we borrow? We borrowed 30. So we paid 20, well, paid 20 from the seller, borrowed 30, so how much did we walk away from closing? Well. Let's not talk about closing costs, but we got 10, 10 grand to walk yeah, away with. Minus closing costs. So mm -hmm. if we just say, just to track a thousand closing costs off that 10, we walked away with nine. Walk around with nine, roughly. That's tax free money. The reason why it's tax free money is because it's borrowed money. The, the government can't tax you off of borrowed money. So that's another strategy. So we bought, the reason why our payment is 667 every month, because we, we borrowed more than the purchase price. Which exactly. Is so exactly. we walked away from the closing table, basically nine grand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not a bad day. Yeah, so we could have borrowed twenty, just exactly what the, the purchase price was. Plus, let's say twenty-one, a thousand dollars closing cost. We could have borrowed twenty-one thousand to evenly pay for the property and the closing cost, and a payment would have been a lot cheaper. Obviously, exactly, it would have been I don't know roughly like four sixty-seven, give or take. All right, and still we still get the eight seventy-five a month, and we're still getting that three thousand dollars down. So. You just add that, so we got nine thousand from the closing table. We bought thirty, plus we're getting three thousand dollars down. Mm -hmm. Add that, that's twelve thousand mm -hmm. dollars before we even get our monthly payments to right. come in. Right. So guys, I just want you to see this type of strategy that that we do. This is a sexy strategy in the single family world, the residential world. Obviously, you know you you buy two hundred unit apartment buildings. That's a whole nother strategy, and, and this won't work in that in that in that world in that strategy. But in the single family world, this is a great strategy. Now, if you live in like LA or New York or something like that, where you get, you know, um, you can't freaking buy a doghouse for 20, can't even, 
Can yeah. you buy a window? You know? Yeah, you're pretty. Yeah, you're the numbers strong. are rough so, there. So that might be different, but these these work in specific markets. Go in virtual markets. I, I'm. This is a virtual market for me. All right. Uh, I'm looking in several other markets. I'll give you one market I'm looking at now. I'm looking in the Alabama market because these price ranges out there. Ohio has good. I mean, it's so many markets where these work, and they don't have to be twenty thousand dollars profit. They don't. So you, you you seen seen some properties we did uh, that did you build and, and they're sixty thousand dollars. Exactly. Yeah. It's just about making the money the numbers work and I mean right. it's money going in versus money coming out. So if you just yeah. make the private money be less than your money mm -hmm. coming in, you're golden. Absolutely. Is it second minute upstairs bathroom? Sure. Uh, as <laughs> retirement. A hundred percent. This is not in bad shape. I mean I mean I wouldn't no. show them that fire damage. Well before. yeah, that was the uh, <laughs> the Rolls Royce of bad houses. So. Yeah. And that that was uh, that was one of the slow flips um, you guys did. Mm -hmm. Tell me, just just tell them uh, this was completely a, a completely fire damage property. Exactly. Do you uh, have pictures on you? I do have pictures on me. Woo! Strategy. Is that good enough? Yeah, you can swipe. All right, so we ready for this? I think that was a kitchen. Mm. There's not one area. Not damaged here. That. Look at that. Look at here. That. Can they see that right there? Look. Look. How, look. Tell them. Tell them about the numbers to, on that. How much? How much? How much you got down for that one? How much a month? We got two thousand dollars down and five fifty a month over the course of a thirty-year mortgage at forty-nine thousand dollars total. And it's as is. As is. Where is? Got it like that. And what? What is that tenant buyer doing to that property now? He is fixing it up on his own dime. One hundred percent. So if he gets late, if he's late on the payments. Still get the victim like a regular tenant. Because exactly. The, the property's still in your name. Exactly. Right. Um, and he fixes up the property. We get better, back a better product. <laughs> uh, I've had some that were okay. Now they got granite countertops in them right. and everything. So. All right. So basically, here's the paperwork that we use. I mean, not showing you. Know, I don't want to go word for word, but um, we use we use something called agreement for sale. Some states call it agreement, uh, agreement for deed. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people call it land contract. Um, right. And it's always, it's never about the deal. It's always about the terms. And, right. you know, we go over everything free and clear when we uh, do Absolutely. the closing. They and it's, it's only five pages long. It's not really uh, too hectic. It's right. not like you're reading a book. So, so this, it's pretty this, easy. This is, this is, this gives that tenant buyer the, uh, like really the, the, the terms in his best, like spelled out position. So they signed the, the agreement for deed here, but this is an addendum. Where they, which really spelled out here, but we want to make sure they understand this is our identical contract where they initial each bullet and date each bullet. You understand that the base. I'm gonna give you one. As an informed buyer, you understand that you are responsible from this moment forward that any all caps repairs that may be needed will be at your expense. Exactly. That's the first bullet. They initial and we read it. We read it to them each bullet, initial and date it. Then we go to the next bullet, and so that way. Just, they can't. They can't. They can't come to us yeah. and be like, "Hey, I didn't know this." And they'll try to. I tell you what, when you're when you're still on these homes, you see a lot of people that get amnesia on the contracts right. they have. And actually, our industry term for these addendums is the dummy letter, and you need it a lot. Yeah. So this is this this is the addendum. Addendum based on based on another contract added to the main contract, which is this one here. And then we get. You know, I just want to show them this. This is like a copy of not showing that person's you know information, but this is basically a, a copy of the uh, cashier's check of that down payment. All right. Um, this is basically a copy of the twenty-five hundred dollars down payment here mm -hmm. um, of another another property here. And I just want to make a copy of that. And they bring in a cashier's check. Some people bring money orders. Hey, we had one guy bring cash. We have had people bring cash, and it, yep. it it really just comes down to what your preference is. And some people don't want to have cash, and that's yep. perfectly understandable. But as long as you have certified funds and some, you know, cash is king. So right. as long as we take that, and it's not going to stay in our office, we're just going to go right to the bank with it. Yep. So. And uh, we might have some people just staying and watching this. Like, oh, I want to do. Do you need to go to the title company with this? No. No. Nope. Tell, tell them how we how we do these deals with, with the tenant buyer. Well, um, there's no uh, the deed's not changing hands, so there's no title need to be, no title needs to be run. There's no actual closing costs, which we get that question a lot, and that's yeah. a nice incentive for these yeah. people that you know don't got to spend extra money on that. Mm -hmm. So the closing's already done because the deed stays in our name. Mm -hmm. So it's really just when you want to move in. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Guys. This is a uh, sexy, this is an amazing buy and hold strategy. Again, if you're living in certain markets, you know, where, you know, you, 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 the hood houses start at half a million and up, like, you know, 
uh, certain parts of Cali, you know, uh, San Diego, New York, then this, this, this specific strategy may not work in that market. But, uh, you know, it's kind of crazy to me that to buy a million dollar rental that can only get 4,000 a month anyway, Doesn't which I do see that by the way, in those markets, I'm like, wow, like I look, I'll look out there and I'm like, man, they paid, you know, $600,000 for it. They put the work into it. Now I, you know, is they? I saw that they try to sell that 1.1, 1.2, took it off the market. Now they rent it for try to rent it, mm -hmm. new listing for 4,500. Exactly. Like, Man, like, you know, woo, yeah. like that that return. I mean, compared yeah. to you know, you know what right. I mean. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, that's another thing, too, with the owner finance. Like I said, you know, these are some of these people's last options. So you can kind of set the price of what you want. You know, the market will still dictate it, yeah. but, you know, you get a little bit of extra leeway when it comes to uh, pricing these. Yeah, we, we know this market is like average now is like what from 69 to 99.9. Roughly. 99 on a. Yeah. Depending on the condition, condition. but yeah, yep. six, 69 to 90, yep. give or take. Yep, give or take. So, um, guys, there's a lot of, it's a lot of markets out there. I mean, I, me personally, I always like I always um, recommend um, in markets like this. I like to stay under a hundred thousand dollars, depending on your financing. Okay, now if you're paying twelve percent for money at a hundred thousand dollars, then it it really might not work. Right. But if you got you paying if you're on cash, that works great. Or if you're getting bank money at the average, you know, five five and a half percent, which that's like an average in today's specific market for uh, conventional bank money, then that works phenomenally well as, as as well. So if you got cash and you use the base money, but twelve percent, we like to stay thirty five K thirty and under. R roughly, yeah. There's plenty of deals out there that are not teardowns. They're very this is I mean, this is a decent shape for for us. For, it is. For, for the slow flip. For rental, somebody come in like, damn, I gotta put the fifteen, twenty K in this thing. Yeah, this is I wouldn't be yeah. uh, renting in this area, right. but I would definitely do some slow flips. Slow flips is brilliant. Guys, go out there. I hope you learned some things. Anything you want to say to them, Alex? Um, the one thing I would say is that, you know, I have a couple of these myself, and, um, you know, I started with no money. So I don't want to hear the excuse. I just want to get some money together because yeah. you can start with literally nothing in your pocket. Yeah, so you, you just really, this guy is like hitting the ground running. Like, it's, it's like, inspired me, inspired to see that, man, because, uh, like, you've been again two years now? Give or take. I was doing some part time when I was still in, on active service, but yeah. uh, but I was making less than thirty thousand a year doing that, and I've been doing this full time. So I'm making about four times the amount of money. So absolutely, absolutely. But what I like about like my first three years in business, I was wholesaling, which AKA assigning deals. I was wholesaling my life away. So I didn't acquire my first buy and hold, which was a rental, by the way. And I was doing, I was going the Section Eight route. So after like my third year in business, and you just start acquiring, doing the slow flip, right, right, right away, hitting the ground running, man. So exactly, you, you're so headed, you're so headed to pack, so yeah. headed to pack. But guys, go out there. I hope you learned something today. Um, make it happen. Don't be scared. Um, if you have any questions.